Hello and welcome to the Yacht Channels podcast. Today I'm going to be having a conversation with my old friend Dan Stabbert in anticipation of auctioning this vessel on October 10th. And while we have done an in-depth technical tour of this vessel previously, I'm just going to lift some of the footage from that to introduce the vessel for those of you who are not familiar with it prior to my conversation with Dan Stabbert. 172 foot in length. Uh, she's uh, in a fine, fine research ship. Um, she is on a year contract to the U.S. government right now, performing fisheries and ecological studies on the west coast of the United States. There will be about 25 to 30 people on board for the next month. She has a 9,000 mile range, and so that won't be an issue, but she'll be away from uh, port services uh, for well over a month, close to 35 days. It's a very reliable ship. She's CPP propulsion and variable pitch. She can just cruise along at a half a knot or you can do a solid 10 knots. She's very fuel efficient. She uh, burns less than 800 gallons per day, which is for a 172 foot ship of this size and worldwide capability is, is very efficient. Very quiet, very smooth running ship and beautiful lines. One of the prettiest research ships in the world to date large back deck area, uh, which can be used for science work, it can be used for submarines, ROVs, and if you decided that you want a little bit less, you could, it would be a great area for large lounges and so forth. Beautiful lines, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous lines. Whether it's a research ship or a yacht or, 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 or a combination vessel, you know, it's, uh, it's rare to have that feel. You feel how the bow flows down and the, and the pilot house rounds out. It's a beautiful, beautiful vessel. The vessel's in class fully, has a U.S. Coast Guard certification, which is rare, on top of it as a passenger vessel and, and research vessel. And then she also has ABS load line and ABS class. So all her machinery is cared for and maintained to the highest standard. Due to cutbacks in budgets for government research agencies, uh, Dan's decided to dispose of this vessel and ask for my assistance. So we have it up on Yacht World. I think we're asking 1.3 million. However, uh, we are going to uh, offer it under auction on October 10th. The vessel right now in August is having an extensive ABS class survey. It'll also have a U.S. Coast Guard inspection. So we're going to be able to offer a vessel that is right out of dry dock that is capable of cruising anywhere in the world. So now I'm going to connect us with Dan Stabbert. So good morning. You too. Good morning, Paul. From the sunny Pacific Northwest. What's going on with Ocean Star right now in the shipyard? Well, she's getting ready to go through her two and a half year special survey with ABS. So her midterm and then her updating her Coast Guard certificate of inspection. So she'll be good to go around the world on any voyage here um, when she completes that dry docking and inspection period, which will be done before uh, the auction. And what's involved uh, with that kind of an inspection? The two and a half year is a, is a complete dry docking, uh, an inspection of the bottom, um, the general steel condition, shafts, seals, and then all of her machinery is inspected, her main engines, her generators, her safety systems, all operational systems that are connected with, with uh, the vessel taking a voyage and going to sea safely and efficiently and operating properly are inspected and approved. She's been a very busy vessel for the last couple of years. She has been. She's been. She's had a, a good quality history. Um, she is came off a season last year uh, up in the Arctic, uh, north of Barrow, uh, way north, and uh, came back late in the season. And then um, she had a, a big trip out west onto the Pacific Gyre. Um, she's had some trips down south uh, in investigating the uh, an, an ex ex species that's going extinct, the vaquita here for a joint U.S.-Mexico operation. She has the A-frames and the outfitting. She's coming with all of her scientific winches, which are worth a substantial amount of money. And, yeah. and make her readily available. If someone wanted to, 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 to drive a revenue stream, you know, they could, they, could, they could do it tomorrow. They could do it the day they close the deal. But she's had some two, two and a half, three million dollar years, right, where she made a million dollars in profit. What is her day rate? Normally, the day rate ranges anywhere from fourteen to eighteen thousand dollars a day, and that's with you providing the crew only. That's correct. Just us providing the crew. We're providing between nine and twelve, depending on the mission and how many people you need to 
support the staff on board. And, the, 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 the and that's, that's 24 hour operation. Schedule. It is 24 hour operations and that includes galley staff. I mean, food and having an ordinary seaman for staterooms and serving and that type of thing. So that's supporting, you know, a, sta a, a, a client group of say another 20, you know, to 22 people. Our Stern, she's had ROVs on board. She's had autonomous underwater AUVs on board. She has supported diving at times. She has done buoy projects where we've done special scientific buoys. We carry them up and we deploy them in the ocean. She's actually supported coring where you go and, you, and we send down uh, drills into the ocean bed and we decide we look into the sediment and what it means and what the history of it is. And, and so that we understand better, lot better the geological formations surrounding it and what will happen. She's done ice gouge surveys, so icebergs come down and through the area. She studied the bottom of the ocean for that. Right down to she's she's got the electronic components on board to study fisheries. She can she has electronics to study midwater fish, which are a different frequency than bottom fish, and so. She, she has different systems on board just that allow her to pick up and to understand biomasses. So when a vessel like this, when you say she goes north, she goes way north, right? Way I mean, north, thousands of miles above the Aleutians. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's no support up there in terms oh, of- Oh, zero. No, when she goes north, there's no one around. And she may stay up there in the season uh, past, the, and there are tugs and barges supporting local uh, villages and small towns north. And then they all head south, generally in that August, September, early September timeframe. And she generally stays later, and so there's really zero support. In fact, if you had any major issue, you'd probably have to travel back 1,800 to 2,000 miles uh, just to find a support facility. They have to have the endurance um, in, ter in terms of being able to carry along all their supplies and uh, walk-in refrigeration and... And, and, and you have a machine shop, I believe, on board. There is a machine shop. There are spare parts. I mean, she's, she, she needs to be outfitted. A research ship of, that works with our group has to be outfitted for worldwide service. That needs to be able to go, you know, to, the, to Asia. and needs to be able to go up to the Arctic and as far south as, as the Antarctic. Uh, so um, she's, she's a ship that was designed both in her systems for redundancy, but she has lots of spare parts storage, and she has a supporting system systems from water making to sewage handling to refrigeration, like you said, freezers, dry storage and all of that, uh, to, and of course, fuel capacity, uh, to support her, her, her team of up to 35 to 40 people safely and efficiently and effectively. She was built by the U.S. government. She was. She was built by and for NOAA as a specialized oceanographic fisheries research vessel. The difference when they when NOAA builds a ship versus say a commercial yard or a yacht yard, um, they, they have different criteria. They do, a substantially different criteria. They, uh, their first criteria is uh, sound signature. They, because most of the data that's collected around the ocean is done acoustically, the right sound signature, a very low noise emission is important, a very quiet vessel. Um, it, it's very important. That's the number one criteria. Then secondly, would be her redundancy. They, these are worldwide uh, class vessels, world-class vessels. So full ocean. And so they build these ships with substantial redundant systems for NOAA. So the, the cooling system and the heating system and the, and the air conditioning system and the refrigeration, everything has got a backup to it so that you can, you know, you plan a mission out for one, two, three years in advance of, 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 of a departure voyage, you need to know that you can carry that mission out. You don't want to be sidelined by some uh, spare part missing or a system that might have some deficiency. Even, albeit small, sometimes you can be remote with these ships and a small item can become a big one. So they're built with substantial redundancy into them. And then Noah, when they built the ships, they put some beautiful lines into them that, that, that are hard to find today with great camber and shear and some, I mean, this is one of the prettiest small research ships in the world today. And so on board, uh, in terms of systems, you have uh, a certain number of crew and then you have scientists and how many souls would be living on board for that length of time? I think she carries between 36, 33 and 40 souls. I think maybe 35 to 36 is what she presently carries. She has quite a large laboratory space. I think she has over a thousand square feet of a laboratory. And so the, the, they've given up some, 
some accommodations for larger laboratory spaces, but which could be used and repurposed if you wanted to carry more personnel. And those are on the main deck, as I recall, the, those big open spaces. The lab, lab spaces are on the main deck and up above. There's, she's got acoustic um, uh, electronic laboratories up above as well behind the pilot house. And then she's also got large wet and dry laboratories down on the main deck. So if somebody uh, came along and they wanted uh, to have an expedition yacht that, that, uh, to go looking for treasure or to go explore the world with their family, um, these spaces should convert quite nicely. Oh, it's beautiful. They'd be beautiful the living room, lounges, open open floor plan place, you know, spaces. We, we could be well utilized without any major change in the structure itself. You'd just be reconfiguring the finishes on the inside. And there seem to be some uh, nice open deck spaces, including uh, what, what we call a sun deck, but you have other names. Yeah, we do. You know, we call it an observation deck because at times we'll bring marine mammal obser observers with us. So they're looking for whales and other other marine mammals that that might be affected by the the studies, or and or they maybe even um, just sampling them and, and testing them and counting them. For example, we were north, and the, in the, her, her last mission was to investigate species and and the the warming climate for potential. Um, Northwest Passage uh, utilization, and so she was there to, to to start studying the effect that an increased uh, traffic through the Northwest Passage would have on marine wildlife. One concern that people have with older uh, steel vessels is is the steel. Well, that's part of our classification. Um, they require um, both the United States Coast Guard and American Bureau of Shipping, which gives the vessel her load line and her, and her machine reclassification. They, re they only allow a certain amount of wastage within the steel structure internally and externally. So external plates, internal framework, tanks, and so forth. Nonetheless, her, her, her steel condition is like she has got maybe 2 and 3%, you know, uh, a diminishment of her of, of framework and so forth. She's in... It, it, as far as steel work goes, I was, she, she was probably a 9.5 out of a 10. And in terms of your main propulsion systems and uh, electric generators, what, what sort of life, what's the life cycle and expectancy? Those systems are maintained well. You'll get 10 to 15 years out of your generator sets. You rebuild them every three to five years. And, um, and your main engines, you can get the lifetime of use out of your main engines. So she's got a medium speed, uh, very low fuel consumption engine. So for her main engines, um, and they, they've got good life in them. They're still utilized. Those engines are still utilized in, out in, in many different parts, industrial uh, places around the world. So parts are readily available. And then she has two 200 kW generators, which one generator will support all of her needs, plus an emergency generator up above that takes all of her, her emergency systems in case she had any problems with the other two that would be sufficient to safely see the vessel back to any port. So we're going to do uh, an auction on Ocean Star that's upcoming. And um, it, it uh, is a good circumstance that all this work is being done right now for a new owner. It is. No, it's a, it's a rare thing. Quite a, there, there are vessels out there in this market, and, and especially as oil and gas vessels, they don't have this beauty in this, in this capability set, but there's quite a few um, cold-stacked oil and gas vessels out there that are just that. They're cold-stacked. They've been laid up. We haven't done that with the Ocean Star. One, she's been working right, consistently. Two, um, the cost to bring a cold-stack vessel from, from, you know, from being laid up without any oversight or care and with lapsed uh, certificates back to operational status can be in the millions. And so we don't believe in that. We believe in just maintaining her, keeping her ready for use. In fact, we bid a project that she's supposed to go out on here yeah, just before the auction uh, to support some nuclear submarine work. So we are we we in, in so so we've maintained the ship well and because she you never know when a contract can come up and, and she can have it a revenue stream. And secondly we don't like we like selling a vessel that's fully capable and ready to go and we just thought that was a benefit to the buyers to have a ship that's turnkey but there's spare parts and tools and machinery that you know, when 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 they buy her at this auction whoever purchased her they could start her up and load their groceries on and and be headed across the pacific if they wanted to she'll be dry docked and all of her systems her sea valves will be checked all her her shell plating will be checked for any indentations make sure there's been no mechanical damage at all 
her shafts, seals, rudders, all those systems, underwater systems be inspected. That's the dry dock portion. And she'll be inspected by American Bureau of Shipping as well as United States Coast Guard inspectors on separate occasions. So what would it cost to build this ship today? Uh, the, to build a research ship of this nature with the redundant systems and so forth generally runs uh, three to four times the cost of building a, 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 a oil and gas vessel of a similar size. So while a new oil and gas vessel may cost $25 million, this boat, $20, $25 million, this boat's going to cost new in this one, in this size class, this 175 class vessel, it's going to cost probably 75 to 90 million in that general range. You know, these vessels, unlike others, are built with the, with the quarters, the superstructure, the superstructure is built sufficient to house, you know, that 30 to 40 personnel and to have the scientific spaces, the laboratories, both electronic for computers and dry, dry and scientific labs to, to wet laboratories for wet, wet studies and all of that. So to have that kind of superstructure is, is tremendous. There are not a lot of vessels like this that, are, that enable that uh, comfort at sea and to have that superstructure in such a way that, that, that s supports those offshore missions. For but at the same time, we did some uh, design studies uh, for conversion on this where you would knock some of the, uh, the, the quarters together, the scientific quarters, and make nice little guest suites. We did. And, and there's, you know, without, without having to make any exterior structural changes, you know, she easily accommodated, you know, eight to ten suites and, and um, public spaces and large dining and great room type of effects. So, um, and, and she's just a, a nice boat. She, it can be done at a reasonable price because you're not really modifying the exterior structure. You're just, just re rearranging some of the interior spaces. Yeah, and, you, and you've got the, uh, the AC systems and you've got all the plumbing. and They're already there. AC, sewage, all the systems to support you are there. So it's really more for cosmetic, structural, bulkhead materials, you know, soft materials, more, more, than, more than anything. Mm -hmm. what, what's your reason for selling? Basically, the revenue days... Uh, between our specialized segment that we focus on, which has been oil and gas and NOAA and the, and the United States government NOAA work have diminished substantially. And so if we can't uh, f keep her utilized to the extent we want to utilize her here, we decide it's best to find a new home for her. All right. And uh, leading up to the auction, um, if people wanted to come and inspect the vessel. We would be glad to host them and, and show them around the oceans. Star. And then on the day of the auction, we're going to have uh, perhaps you on board or other uh, knowledgeable captains and engineers with camera and sound so that uh, uh, any sort of last minute questions that people want to, uh, that, that they have, um, we can address live. That's right. It, it, you know, what, what, what a stabbert will be there with us, myself or Daniel, one of us will be there to answer questions and uh, we'll have a port engineer that knows a ship that's been involved with the vessel for years maintaining and caring for her well thank you dan for spending this time with us today and uh telling us about ocean star very much looking forward to the auction and uh, you and i'll be talking a lot i'm going to be getting uh survey information from the abs survey that's ongoing and that will all be posted uh, on the links that are connected with this video and this podcast. There also will be a link to the auction site where uh, interested buyers can register to become bidders. And as mentioned, we're going to do the auction live. So we'll have a live podcast uh, from on board the Ocean Star and also from the Yacht Channel Studios on the day of the auction. So we uh, look forward to this event. It's going to be exciting and uh, more to follow. Thank you.